How's it going, everybody? In the shop because I actually uh, thought I'd film a quick video about this. It was actually a recent acquisition. So recent it actually happened today. Uh, you're looking at a, a Savage model, well, Mark II model TR. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a whim purchase. I haven't had a Savage in, a uh, modern Savage in many years. And uh, I think my last one was a Mark VSR, and I uh, saw this one today at a local gun store and uh, picked it up. Uh, it's in great shape. Um, came with a uh, Cabela's Rimfire specific scope with all the adjustable turrets on it. This one has the um, standard velocity 22 long rifles on it right now. It's a 3x9. Rifle has actually seen little, uh, little use, uh, if any, really. When I looked at it, the action screws uh, right here actually looked like they'd never had a, an Allen key in them. So most likely somebody never even had it out of stock. And this one right here was literally finger tight. And the other one wasn't much tighter. So I actually have a pretty rich history with with Mark II's and I used to be an extreme fan of them and um, uh, adored them for a long time. And the only reason I got out of them was because I, I just kind of moved on. I got a little bit more refined. And so there's nothing wrong with the Savage, but one thing they are not as refined. They're, I, I like to affectionately call them sheet metal guns. Although when somebody asks me, hey, what do you recommend for a rimfire? I say, well, what's your budget? Well, it's this. So nine times out of 10, my first recommendation is a Savage in a non-plastic stock. You know, you can get those Tupperware stocks and they are probably the worst stock on the market. Just don't do it. It ruins the whole gun overall. And if you spend a little bit more, even getting that nice hardwood stock that they have, usually has great grain, nice checkering, and it's a much stable, much more stable platform. A Boyd's the same thing. I don't really, I'm not really a tactical kind of guy, but um, this is a very stable stock and it's a good platform to go on. So you probably notice right away there's something missing here. And for my uh, <laughs> experienced, astute uh, viewers, people who watch this channel, you probably recognize right away. Wait, wait. A Savage Mark II TR should have an AccuTrigger. Yeah, I removed it. Um, I do not like AccuTriggers because, like I said before, I'm a bench shooter, I'm not a hunter. And the gun already has a very, very nice functioning safety. It's quite positive. I don't need a lawyer trigger blade on there. I find it very annoying and distracting. So I removed it right away and I actually modified the trigger. So this trigger is sitting at one pound right now reliably, um, which is great for this type of gun. Haven't fired it yet. I'm gonna test it out tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow is my match prep day at the range. I'll be testing the uh, Anschutz 54 at 5,800 with some different ammos. I got some uh, Ely I'm gonna put through it tomorrow and see how it compares to the standard velocity. Um, and also I'm going to take the Schultz & Larsen with the loop or loophole scope on it. We're going to shoot some SK Standard Plus because I might decide to shoot that with this rimfire match. I'm not quite sure. And we're going to take this along to um, have a first shoot with it and see how it does. This is a 3x9 scope and this is too low magnification for a bench shooter snob like myself. I like minimum 12, preferably 15. So... Um, although this is kind of cool, these turrets are kind of rad, and um, I've never seen one before. I've only kind of seen them online and for sale a couple of times, but they have nice target finger adjustable turrets, and you can see. And I don't know the the, re the reviews aren't. You can see their logo on. The reviews aren't super fantastic on them, but you know, for a three by nine room fire scope, for the most part, is uh, you can't really go wrong. The rifle itself is in like excellent condition and very few marks there looks like there's some safe kisses right there and a few on the end of the bolt knob but um uh, like i said I've, I've had a few of these and the bolt condition the typical wear points there's no galling there's usually quite a bit of wear there it's excellent still a little bit uh greasy from when I cleaned it up. Man, when I when I picked it up, somebody had, had like cleaned it or lubricated it with like PB Blaster or, or geez, like, uh, I don't know, like a liquid wrench or something. And the smell of that stuff is atrocious and next to your face. And as it is, I'm kind of a snob and I use Ballistol anyway due, due to it's food safe and 
skin safe qualities. I'm kind of a, a little bit of a snob with that sort of thing. I like Ballastol products because they're they're safe to handle and use. And really, my guns never get super dirty anyway. We usually I do them every range session, so I keep them pretty clean. Anyway, it came with a nice five shot mag, and like I didn't touch that. Look at it. There's no or very little dirt on it. It looks like it's barely been used. And typically with Savage is a good way to tell if it's been used a lot is the bottom metal here, this really thin piece. And if it's scratched up from somebody, you know, trying to jam the mag in it repeatedly, but this one is excellent. Screw holes, like I said, looked like it had never been touched. I think I was the first person to get in there and I, I went in and cleaned it all up and there's no corrosion. And I got it for a really good deal. So, like I said, typically I'm not a savage or let alone a tactical shooter, but the price was right. And I thought, wow, geez, like I could always have one of these as a fun project gun. The last one I had was an FVSR and that comes with a stupid Tupperware stock. And I put it in a Boyd's and bedded it and pillar bedded it, epoxy bedded it and um, did the trigger mod as well. Like the, to me, this, the Accu Trigger is such a wonderful system compared to the old non-Accu Trigger ones, which you have to shim the... The trigger housing to, to get half decent I actually have a very special Lakefield pre-savage acquisition target rifle that'll feature in an upcoming video it's um, 91TR and for those of you who know what a Lakefield 91TR is it's a pretty special rifle I have the the case with manual keys for the case uh, original sights the works so that's gonna come in an upcoming video so I know this platform quite well and I know what it's capable of and Back to what I said at the beginning, when I recommend people first rimfire to get a Savage, this would be an ideal um, purchase. Although new, I'm not sure if they still make it or not, but new, this price is, you know, you're getting close to CZ, and if you can afford it, a CZ is the way to go for a few different reasons. Um, I think that the average um, Savage Mark II will shoot just as good as or even better in, in a lot of cases, in my experience, than a typical CZ. Savage makes an excellent barrel, I don't care what anybody says. The trigger's good once you play with it. However, they're kind of like, you know, receiver tubes are thin and the technology's old. And I know on my lake field I have horrific extraction and ejection problems from the poor C-clip design. And we'll see how this one is to more typical stuff. But anyway, I'm going to test the scope because it's on there and we'll make sure everything functions good because it's a used gun. I don't know its history, although it looks like it's had very little wear in it. You know, normally when you find a scope like this used, you look to see if it's been dropped, you know, off a bench and somebody decided to sell it real quick. But, you know, this one, even the rings are nice. They're, they're unbranded, but they're nice, clean. They don't look like they're, you know, off Amazon kind of thing. They're a nice steel ring. And I don't know, it's a, it's a really nice little package. And I thought, wow, geez, I could use it for anything really you know like it'd be a fun build and definitely they always benefit from betting these because they the action screws on these are very they're very touchy um savages with action screw torque and uh there's it's free floated but it's very minimally free floated and you start tightening up the action screw and then this ridiculous pop can bottom metal distorts and normally what i do is i make my own out of a piece of aluminum uh that's what i've always done it's just easier um but you know maybe i'll I'll actually buy one this time. This one has a nice alloy trigger guard, so you don't need to upgrade that. But the, it always benefits from bottle metal because it allows you to um, get this action screw tight enough. Whereas if you actually torque it properly, like I've got it, I've got it torqued around 20 foot pounds right now, and there's some distortion already in this bottle metal because it's literally it's it's like a, a soup can thickness. And it's always been the Achilles heels of one of these savages. Especially when you start to ring them, like ring accuracy out of them. That's one of the first things you should change. I have some parts somewhere. I have some longer action screws that I ordered from a gentleman years ago um, for that. Because when you, you know, you put up a, like a, let's say an eighth of an inch aluminum, you space them out a little bit and you're not getting a lot of engagement inside the, uh, the screw holes. Which savages are quite strange because they have like half pillars almost. I say savages, but like I'm very, I'm very fond of these because they're made in Lakefield, Ontario, in Canada here, and they have been since Savage took Lakefield over. And like I mentioned, I have an original Lakefield target gun. So being Canadian, it's kind of like patriotic uh, to have a very cool, very well known 
million sold American rifle and its quality, but it's actually made in Canada in a small plant with, uh, you know, not that many Canadians working in it. So that's kind of rad. And like, listen, <laughs> sheet metal gun or not, it's, uh, the fit and finish on it is quite, quite good. And they have this kind of, I think it's like a bead blasted, it looks like parkerization, but I think it's like a bead blasted bluing. I don't know what Savage uses, but, um, this one is the nicest example I've seen, believe it or not. I had a, a TRSR 17HMR not too long ago. Ugh, I hated that thing. It was like, it just was wrong. It didn't, um, it's very similar to this, but there's something I didn't like about it. When I held it and when I played with it, I didn't, ah, I shot it. I, it was accurate, but I didn't like it. So I, I didn't, didn't hang on to it long. And normally that's, I just don't like it. Whereas this one I kind of like. It's, uh, it seems like a little bit downsized version of that. Not so... I don't know, more sporter-esque, if you know what I mean. It's a little bit handier, you know? Like, I know one thing I really liked about the FVSR was it had a um, nice little short barrel on it, but, like, I find these flutes very attractive. Pointless, of course, but I find them quite attractive, and the stock's well done, and being a Boyd's, and nothing fancy, of course. You either like Boyd's or you don't. I like Boyd's, so... Anyway, I thought I'd just film a quick video of this new acquisition that followed me home today. And uh, can't wait to try it out tomorrow. Um, I don't know how much I'll actually be able to shoot it because I'm legitimately going to practice and get some more numbers for my match coming up at the end of the month. But um, I'm not quite sure where this is going to go. We'll see how it shoots tomorrow. But I did find the time to, to mod the trigger. That's a cool mod to do, and there's you know lots of information online. And if anybody's interested, put in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll show you how I did that. It's it's mine is a little bit more modified than you would have to do but if you just want to remove the trigger blade because lots of people will tell you well you know it's not safe to do that you shouldn't remove a safety feature and you, yep you can follow their advice if you want um, but mine is a bench gun and it already has a functioning safety so the the lawyer safety here i don't i don't see the point so i removed it with no adverse effects and uh, you can put it back in and nobody will know the difference it's just literally a pin that comes out I, I mentioned that I have modified mine fuller, like a, um, farther rather, and so that's not reversible things I've done, but you don't have to do those. There's just tons of different mods you can do, and you can buy kits online that change springs and get this trigger to a very respectable level. I have it at one pound right now, and that's as far as I'm going with it. Today, it's all the time I have, but you can bring these down to five, six ounces uh, relatively easily. The Aka Trigger, without the stupid blade, is a nice trigger. Especially on like a, like, you know, it looks like a tactical gun, and but really it's just a, you know, a sporter. So anyway, so I'm kind of excited to try it out. I haven't had one in a long time, and I'm hoping it uh, shoots reasonably well, and it'll be a good companion for my Lakefield, as they're made in the same factory, albeit <laughs> 30 years apart. So anyway, so um, I'll let you guys know tomorrow how it shoots, and hopefully I'll have some some targets to put up on uh, its uh, general accuracy anyway with a 3x9 and if it if it proves to be positive I'll switch this out and we'll do we'll find out what direction the ammo is if it likes match or which bulk or standard velocity we'll find out and then um, put a bigger scope on it we'll go and we'll chase some groups on it and uh, like I said I've got to find out tomorrow a couple things on the Anschutz and the um, Schultz and Larson and I'll have some more groups. Uh, I think I'm going to test some Ely Sport in the in the Anschutz tomorrow at 50 yards, and so hopefully we'll have some groups we compare it to last week's um, standard velocity groups. But anyway, uh, quick vid. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you at the next one.